Hi everybody, welcome back to Jen's Pins on the Best Thing Ever by Jen channel, where I share some of my favorite things in the hopes that it will bring you some happiness. Today I'm going to be swatching my uh, random samples package from Goulet Pens. I actually got, I think, all different ones, so this will be fun. Um, I have here, well, I'll, I'll do them. I'll take a picture here so you can see them a little better. There we go. And uh, I'll do them one at a time. So what I do when I'm swatching is I take my um, glass dip pen and I do a little scribble and write the name. And then I use the paintbrush to do a better swatch. So they will look like this. And this is maybe my favorite, maybe my second favorite ink. So let's get started. So this first one I'm going to do, actually I'm going to start with the lightest first. This is the Atramentous Amber Yellow. This is so pretty. It just looks like liquid gold. Um, <coughs> sorry, Rex says hi. <coughs> Rex, check the mail. <coughs> Someone is outside. That is a grievous error on their part. Rex is my corgi. He is nine years old and um, he's a good boy. He's a good dog. Very <coughs> snuggly for a corgi. All right, so we're doing a glass dip pen right now. Oh, this is nice. <coughs> this is, um, this is actually going to flow really well based on how thick the line is here. This is amber yellow copper. So my only hesitation with these copper inks is that they are very hard to clean out of a pen. You almost have to have a pen where you can um, really get in there. You can see the gold shimmer. There we go. It's very, very nice. Um, it's actually a little bit orange too. I have a um, Robert Oster. I think that one is actually called Liquid Gold. Um, I'll show you the comparison to that one when we're done. But this actually has quite a bit of orange in it, which I guess makes sense for the copper. That one is so pretty. Um, the Robert Oster Liquid Gold was a little bit too light even to read, but I think because this has so much orange in it and because uh, it's going to flow better, it seems, it's going to be a lot easier to read. So that's pretty neat. Let me see if I can adjust the light here. Hmm. That might actually be better. We'll see. All right, we'll go with that for now. Okay, so I am going to do the uh, paint dip. This is one of my favorite parts. What I do is, um, I'm gonna actually shake it up again to get all that copper in there. Um, I do quite a bit at the top of the ink swatch, and then I just sort of let it run out by the end because I want to see how much ink actually lays down and what it's going to look like in a um, in a finer nib. And yes, this paintbrush has seen a lot. So it is pretty frayed, but it does the job. So I'm going to rinse this out. And I have a uh, two cups of water, so I do the first one to get most of the ink off, and then the second one to get the rest of it off. Sometimes it comes off, and sometimes it doesn't. And this is why this paintbrush is so smooshed up, because I have to really get into uh, where the bristles actually meet the metal part to get all of the ink out of there. So. I am going to 
check this out for a minute because it's so pretty. Okay, and then I'm going to set it aside and let it dry. So the next one I will do, let's see, we have a lot of red and blue here, it looks like. I'm going to leave the reddish ones for last. And, ooh, that's a brown one. I'll probably do that one with the reds. All right, so we'll do Diamine Solstice next. And these are the color ring cards. They're pretty good. They are um, not as smooth as I would have liked, but they're still nice. I got that from Goulet as well. Oops. Eh, well, since I already inked it up, I'll just go with this. I do not know what to expect with this one because I don't actually know what color this is on the website. I don't think it's a shimmer, is it? No, it's not a shimmer. Oh, yeah, it is. Sorry, I took that out of frame. It is. That's a much finer shimmer than I'm used to with diamine inks. I'll um, shake this up a little better. I did shake it a little before, but now we'll do the uh, writing sample here. I will try not to rest my left hand in the uh, in the brush sample. So I'll try not to get my fingers completely inky. So this is Diamine Solstice. Okay. This is almost like a gray brown. I don't know if you can see that. I'll do the color comparisons when I'm done too. That's interesting. I'm curious to see what it looks like when um when the words are dried out. Okay, so we'll set that one to the side. And this next one I will do the Twisby Blue Black. I was excited to get this sample because I really like a blue black, but um I got Noodler's 50, 54th, 58th Massachusetts, I don't remember. And um, that one feathered so badly, so I've been kind of hesitant to get another blue-black. But I saw when I went to the DC Pen Show, there, uh, one of the vendors had some samples out that were written in the Twisby Blue Black, and it was really nice. So I'm excited to actually try this one out in a pen. All right, that's good enough. Okay, so this one, I will actually start with the dip pen. This one is not a shimmer ink, and I'm sure most of you have probably used this, but I have not. So this will be neat. Okay, so this is a Twisby. Blue. Black. You can tell this one doesn't flow quite as well as the Diamine, but still pretty well. I really like um, most of the Diamines. They are usually pretty lubricated, which works really well. Okay, and then I'm going to take my paintbrush and dip. This is a really nice color. It definitely has a nice strong blue. It's not too dark. It's just a really pretty color. Yeah, there's a lot of blue in that. It's really, really pretty. So this 
depending on how it flows in an actual pen, that might be my new blue. I love blue. I love navy. They're just really nice colors. Okay, I'm going to pause the video and clean out my cup because with all of these, well, I'll do one more. I'll do the other blue one and then I'll clean it out with all these blue and gray inks. Uh, the water's getting pretty dark. That's good enough. And let's do the dip pen. Anyway, I hope you guys are all doing well. Um, curious to see what you guys have been writing, if you don't mind leaving that in the comments. Um, I'm always curious to know what people are writing because I don't write much. I have a lot of ink and I don't go through it as fast as I need to. Uh, this one is Robert Oster Bondi Blue. So I'm always curious to see what everybody is using their pens for. So if you don't mind, I would like to know because I'm looking for ideas. This is a really pretty blue. And there I just rotated the glass dip pen because um, sometimes I noticed it'll run out of ink on one side, but it'll still have quite a bit on the other side. So I just wanted to see what it would look like with the, the stronger ink. So. Now I'm going to do the brush. So the top is going to be more what it looks like in a broader nib and the bottom will be more what it looks like in a finer nib. And this is a really pretty blue. I don't think it's showing up as bright here as it is in person. It's, um, I want to say it's close to Diamine Blue Lightning, but I will, um, show you the comparison card when this is dry. There we go. It's a little better. It is brighter in person than this. So, okay, I will pause the video and be right back. Okay, I am back. And this is Noodler's Georgia Peach. I really love peach and coral. So also excited to see what this one looks like. Oh, that looks like a nice pinky peach right there. Okay. This is Noodler's. Georgia, peach, do you see how the glass dip pen ran out of ink right here? And then I just rotated it and there was a lot more. Okay, let me try to adjust the lighting again. This is actually really pretty pink. This um, reminds me of the, um, oh, what is it? The Herbin Bouquet Danta but brighter and with a little bit more orange in it. It's really pretty and it looks like it'll flow well based on how much the uh, glass dip pen, how wide the letters are here, how much it laid down. All right, so let's do the brush. Yeah, that has a lot of orange in it. It doesn't look like it has that much by the time 
ink runs out. Oh my goodness. And look how lubricated this one is. I think it might be a little light and a fine nib based on this section right here, but because it is so lubricated, I don't know that that will actually be a problem. Like a fine nib might not actually come out that fine, but that's interesting. And it is more pink in person than is showing up here, but it's close. All right, so we'll let that one dry. And this is my last card. Oh no, wait, I have two more. So I will run out um, shortly. Uh, these are my last two cards, but I think I will double up on the brown on that Noodler's Beaver. Okay, so this is, you know what, let me do the ones that don't look like they're going to stain. Usually I can tell if they're going to stain because if you turn them upside down, if the ink comes off the side of the test tube, like the Noodler's Beaver here, you can see it go away. That one probably won't stain. The um, the Robert Oster Red Gold might a little bit, but it looks like that's actually coming off too. So that one probably won't stain. The Pelican Edelstein Star Ruby. I am very confident that this one will stain. <laughs> so um, I'm going to do this one last. And I will do... I think the red gold first. Oh, I have, yeah, okay. Let's do red gold. Oh, forgot to dry off my uh, pens and my brush. So I did a video last week on my DC Pen Show haul. I haven't put it up yet. I don't know if I quite like it, but I probably should just put it up so you guys can see what I got. It was a lot. It was more than I should have gotten. <laughs> um, let me shake this up one more time just to make sure that I get all the gold in there. But it was a lot of fun. I got to meet Drew and David from Fig Boot. It was, uh, and if you um, look on the um, Goulet page on Facebook, I am the one that posted the insane amount of pictures from the show. And uh, I'm glad I could bring those to you. Everyone, it seems like everyone loves those new vanishing points. I have not tried a vanishing point myself, um, but I have to say the resins on those new ones are very pretty, very pretty. The orange one especially just looks like fire. Okay, so this is a Robert Oster red gold. I can tell just from how thin the letters went down with the glass pen that this is not going to be the best flowing ink but it is nice it does look just a straight red with gold shimmer so if you like a red with a gold shimmer this is for you this is probably it's gonna be too thin for me to write with I like the really lubricated inks my favorite red is the um, diamine wild strawberry so I would likely stick with that and I'll show you the wild strawberry in comparison as well so you can see that here and I will do the uh, brush sample oh someone shut a car door it's the end of the world yeah he's nine years old and we've lived here for his entire life and uh I don't know why he still barks at everything. <laughs> and it's the same neighbors too. It's the same car doors shutting. It's, it's not like they come in. They don't bother us. They don't come up to the door. He just 
wants to let us know. And it's funny because he uh, usually when my husband or I come home, he barks a lot. There you go. You can see the brush. Let's see if I can get the shimmer better. There we go. Yeah, he normally barks a lot, and uh, lately I've noticed that when we are all gone and we come home, he barks zero amount. He does not bark at all when none of us are here. And in fact, he will not even come to the door to greet us. I find him on our couch, lounging, sometimes upside down, like he doesn't have a care in the world. So it seems like when he's home, he just likes to protect us, which I think is really sweet. Um, but then it gets annoying when it's in the middle of a video or in the middle of a work call. But he's sweet. He's my buddy. I also work out of my room. When we bought this house, we were absolutely not planning on um, working from home. I'm actually going to find the brown now because I think the pink will be really hard to get out of the brush and I don't want to deal with that right now so I have to find my browns. Autumn oak. I actually don't have that many browns. I have, I actually ended up buying Colorverse Coffee Break. There it is. So I think Oh, here's another Noodler's one, so I will just do it on the back of that one. Okay. Yeah, Colorverse Coffee Break is really nice. It has some decent shading, um, especially in the stub nib. So that was pretty neat. Okay, so this one is Noodler's Beaver. This looks like it's going to be darker. Okay. This is another one of those thinner inks. That will be on the drier side. So maybe not the best for a finer pen. Pretty thin right off the bat. All right. So it's kind of just a brown. It's okay. There's a little bit of shading, but not much. All right. And last but not least. Pelican Edelstein Star Ruby. I have heard a lot about this one. I am excited to try it. Oh, this looks very pink. Very stainy. Uh, okay, we'll see how this goes. Okay. Wow, this is dry. I'm actually going to do a second dip on this to see if I can get more ink down. Not much. All right. I'm gonna rinse off my pen. It actually came off okay. That's great. 
Okay, and we're going to do the brush. Let me dry the brush off first. To do that. I have to say this is really pretty, even if it is thinner. Yeah, I'm going to say a broad nib or a broader medium nib for this. I So I am a little biased because I don't particularly like writing with fine nibs. I like the smoother nibs. If it's a smooth, fine, wonderful, but I don't. It's hard enough for me to write being left-handed. I like just to be able to um, get the ink down without an issue. Since I'm left-handed, I'm usually pushing rather than pulling when you write in English. And um, yeah, so I don't like the fine nibs because then you're just digging into the paper. So this is a really pretty pink. It is a fuchsia, I would call it. So if you went for a hot pink, but uh, really darkened it, I would say this is probably close. This is definitely not hot pink, but I think if it was lighter, it would be. It's got, it has a lot of shading, actually, now that I'm looking at it um, up close. When it gets toward the edges, I don't know if you can see this. When it gets toward the edges of the um, the scribble here, it looks like it changes color just slightly. I don't know. I'll have to see what it looks like when it dries. So, hang tight. I will line these up and try to find some um, comparable colors, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a little bit and do these one at a time. So our new color here is Twisby Blue Black, and here it is with Roar and Clinger Salix. So really close. The Salix is more leaning toward a sky blue uh, than a navy. This is Diamine Prussian Blue. So Prussian Blue is lighter and a little bit more gray. This is Noodler's 54th Massachusetts. This is the one that I said bled and feathered heavily. This is really ridiculous feathering. This is really bad. So I can't even use this ink. I think I kept it, but I, I there's no way I can use it. This is just really bad. And I've heard that from uh, a couple reviews. So, Noodler's 54th Massachusetts, I say might be a little more gray. As you can see, there is a huge difference between the wetness of the Noodler's 54th and the Twisby Blue Black. The Twisby, Twisby probably doesn't flow, it, it's not as lubricated as some of the ones that I like. I think it would be okay. Um, and you can see there's almost a little bit of sheen on the blue-black, whereas there is none on the 54th. So yeah. And the last one I have is the Herbin Bleu de Profondeur, I think. And um, that one's a little bit brighter blue. It doesn't fade out to quite such a light color. And the Twisby, you can see that's going to have pretty decent shading when you can get it to flow well enough. It's a very dark blue in a broad and then a very light blue uh, in a thinner line. And the Herbin is more of a straight navy. So even though it looks like a brighter blue, I would say the Herbin is probably what you would think of as navy. The Twisby Blue Black here is like um, a light denim, and that's actually showing up pretty true to color. So, all right. Okay, and our new color is Diamine Solstice. This is a really interesting color. So this is a gray 
but it looks like there's actually green shimmer instead of um, silver or gold. It's green, which is really neat. I like it when they put um, colored shimmer in there. It just changes the look completely. However, it is a really light shimmer. It's not in your face. So I think that's neat. Um, because of the green, it actually is pretty close to the Charles Dickens, De Atramentous Charles Dickens. Um, if Charles Dickens had more gray in it, it would look like a similar color. This is Diamine Night Sky, where this is a dark gray with silver shimmer. So you can see the difference between the silver and the um, green shimmer here really well. Take a picture. So, sorry, I jostled the phone. And then this is with it against my favorite gray, Monteverde Smoke Noir. You can see how thick this is as well. They actually, this dye mine looks like it's going to flow really well in whatever pen you put it in. It's going to be really nice. So, um, these both flow really well. The Smoke Noir is really cool. It goes down almost black. And then it dries to this really light gray and it flows so well. I just love it. So those are those four. Okay. I actually had to turn my light down for this because this Deatramentis Amber Yellow Copper, holy heck, I really like this one. The copper is just, it matches so well. You can see that orange shimmer and then you get this second layer which we really don't get in these other colors. It's a really strong, bright, sunny orange layer. And then you have this really pale yellow layer with that little bit of copper shimmer in there. And I am just in love with this one. I might have to get this one. I usually don't go for the orange or yellow because of the, um, crustacean barnacles that uh, Drew and Brian talk about so often, but um, this is it against Noodler's Apache Sunset, a Diamine Autumn Oak, which is uh, much more red-brown. I wanted you to see it, so it's against an orange-reddish. And then this is Robert Oster Liquid Gold. You can see the Liquid Gold is much lighter. It hardly shows up at all when you're writing on paper. But this Deatramentous Amber Yellow Copper, this is definitely going to show up. And it has some beautiful shading. The only thing I would say is that it's almost, the copper might be a little too intense. I think it hides some of that shading. And you can see here, a little bit right here. There's actually little dots where the copper seems to overtake the ink. So if I was to get this one, I would maybe not shake it up so much or shake it up and then let it settle a little bit before I put the ink in just so I wouldn't pick up as much copper. But that one is absolutely beautiful. All right, this one's gonna be easy because I only have one other red ink. And like I said, this is one of my favorites, Diamine Wild Strawberry. And this is the new Robert Oster Red Gold that I got. The, um, I'm gonna turn the light back up now that we're not gonna get blinded by copper. All right, so you can see this pretty straightforward red. Lighter a little bit than the Wild Strawberry. I think they're actually pretty close. Um, yeah, the red gold is a little lighter and the gold shimmer actually makes it seem even lighter than the red pigment is. Diamine Wild Strawberry, it just flows so well. Like, look how lubricated that is. And you can even get a little bit of sheen on the edges of the letters, if I can get it to pick that up. Eh, not really. You can see it in the swatch, but it actually happens on the edges of the letters, too. Oh, there you go, a little bit right there. So, um, yeah, it's a pretty nice red. It's just kind of a basic red with the gold shimmer. So it's pretty. 
All right, I'm pretty proud of myself for this one. Because <laughs> when I was doing this watch, I said, hey, this looks like Diamond Blue Lightning. And it does. It really does. The Blue Lightning is that bright, bright, maybe turquoise? And uh, bright light blue, I guess. And the Robert Oster Bondi Blue is almost the exact same color. I think the Bondi Blue is a little brighter and it might just be because it doesn't have that shimmer in it to lighten it up. And you can see the red sheen is coming out pretty hard on the um, on the brush swatch. Not, not so much in the wards themselves. I don't see much if any sheening there, at least not like on the wild strawberry. So that is the blue lightning. This is it against Dad Trementis Cyan Blue Copper. And again, these are pretty close. This is it against Compeki. And you can see on the Compeki, you do get the sheen on the words themselves. Um, whereas you don't really get it on that. Which is kind of weird because you can see the sheen on the Bondi Blue is so strong. So I'm not sure. You know it is the Eroshizuku is um is a wetter ink. So I'll bet you that's why the sheen is coming out more on the words. The Robert Osters gonna be a little drier. And then um just so you can see it against Space State, this is Noodler's Base State Blue against the Bondi Blue. All right, I have a bunch to compare this Noodler's Georgia Peach to because I love peachy, corally colors, and um, this is bright. It's not coming up in the lighting, but this is like, this is a hot peach. This is bright pink. Um, this is almost like a neon color. So if you have any of these, that might help you um, get a sense of how... Maybe not how bright this is, but how much um, it stands out. So this is it against El Bain Bouquet Danta and Diamine Pink Champagne. Pink Champagne, I would say, is more brown. Uh, Clé de Tropique. Again, a little more brown. I'll put that next to Pink Champagne. Corée and Pink Champagne are very close. The uh, Pink Champagne has the gold shimmer in it. And again, this is not quite coming up. This is a very bright pink. Uh, this is Diamine Coral. Coral is more orange. Coral and um, Georgia Peach have, to me, the same level of brightness. So if you're familiar with Coral, that's the kind of brightness you're going to get with Georgia Peach. Georgia Peach is definitely pinker. Coral is very orange. That's actually why I didn't get the coral, even though I love coral colors. It's too orange for me. The um, pink champagne was sort of more right in the middle. That's what I ended up with. That was the first thing I got, actually. And then this is it against Sailor Manyo Sakura. All right, and our last one is the Pelican Edelstein. Looks like this is finally dry now. We did get a little bit of the gold sheen on the outside. It's like a gold, dark gold, green sheen. Um, again, this one really did not sheen on the letters. A little bit on the outside, actually. It's very hard to see. You don't get the actual sheen reflection but you do see on the outside it it, it does seem to um, flow into a different color so that's pretty neat uh, this is a bright fuchsia so i wanted to actually put it up against day tremendous document fuchsia and you can see the difference in the flow this edelstein is going to be um, really really thin and i realize i don't think i wrote the name of it so I'm going to do that right now. It is uh, Star Ruby. I think I was distracted by how dry it was. <laughs> I couldn't believe it, especially since I hear so much about this one. It is a beautiful color. It's just not something that I would write with. Star. 
star ruby. There we go. Sorry about that. Okay. So, the pelicans, star ruby, next to diatromentus fuchsia. Uh, the diatromentus are typically pretty lubricated. So, this is the uh, broad end of the spectrum, and this is the uh, so this is the wet. This is the very dry end of the spectrum, I would say. Um, yeah, so these are coming up pretty true to color on the screen. So hopefully they're doing the same for you. This is it against uh, magenta red copper and cherry blossom. So I think it's a pretty unique color, at least from what I have in my stash. And uh, it's very pretty. It's just very dry. So I would not use it, but very pretty. So. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got some information maybe about some inks that you were thinking about getting. Uh, if you like these types of videos, please subscribe. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I hope I brought some happiness to your life. See you next time.